Hello everyone! Welcome back to Spiritual Essence. I'm very, very happy to have you guys back in so many ways. The longer we stay on our spiritual path, the sooner we will reach our journey. And the journey is even better than the destination. We must continue on the road to success and we must take each piece of knowledge that we gain as miles on that long road that we call our spiritual path. In this episode, we are going to be talking about what I like to call mind movies. Very uh, interesting title. How did you ever come up with that? Well, I like movies. I, I like working with my mind. Simple as that. Anyway, <laughs> so what exactly are mind movies? Oh, I explained this a little bit in the episode where I talked to you about finding your symbol. Mind movies are images that form in your mind, uh, usually during meditation, that give us clues to who we are symbols we're associated with. They give us little clues about what we were put on this world to do. They could even show some scenes from our past lives. And they can also aid us in gaining psychic abilities and clairvoyance. And I will admit that, yes, I have been practicing with mind movies for a long time and I have actually gained the ability to see glimpses of people's futures as well as glimpses of the past. So I have developed my psychic abilities doing this technique. So I hope it helps you if that is what you're looking for. If that is not the case, do not worry. You don't have to go that far if you are not ready. But ultimately, the most important thing is that you must prepare yourself sometime to open up your third eye and to gain more spiritual powers. And that's how you learn more, you get stronger, and you are able to help others in more ways than people who just, let's just say, the normal people, uh, more help than they can do. There is more that you can offer people. This is a gift. Think of it as a gift. It may feel like a curse at times, but it is actually a gift. And any gift is definitely worth accepting gracefully. So, that being said, we're going to get into the nitty gritty of diving right into mind movies. So to start off within mind movies, you can either sit or stand. I'm going to stand for right now. And we're going to get into a nice meditative state. And no matter what the circumstance is, I'm always going to say this when doing a meditation in a lesson. Turn off all distractions. If you need to turn off all the lights, um, turn off all cell phones, TVs, radios. You want it to be as silent as you can possibly make it. Um, there are different types of light that you can do. You can have a small light on, maybe a night light. You can have a candle light. You can have some light, just as long as it's not super bright and distracting while you're trying to focus on these meditations. All right, so <clears throat> once you've got that all situated, all right, get into a nice zone. Sit there or stand. Take in the silence. Let the silence engulf you almost. You will start seeing images in your mind's eye. And they're going to come at you in seconds. One second, it'll be one image. The next that goes, there's another image. And then more, and then more. Now, 
When the next image comes by, no matter what it is, I want you to focus in on it. And I want you, in your mind, to say, I want to explore this image further. I want to know more. Then you might see the image in your mind start to become more real. It might come to life almost as if you're there, and that's good. It might show you a little bit around the image. It might show you what's happening. Are there people around? Are there animals? What's going on? Now, as you're focusing in on this image, just see what's going on and follow it for as long as you can. Sometimes when you first start out, these images are going to disappear within maybe 10 to 20 seconds. Sometimes you're lucky to get even a minute. So the more you do these, the longer the images are going to show up and stay. Now, I want you to have a notebook handy, a scrap of paper and a pencil or a pen. And if your the images in your mind stop and you can no longer go further in that image, possibly because either you don't have enough psychic strength to continue further or there's a higher power saying, no, 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 you're not ready to know that yet. You know, you must get stronger or you must encounter a particular situation in your life before you can go any further. So take that piece of paper and write down everything you've seen, what you felt during that image. Did it seem familiar? Why did it seem familiar? What was familiar about it? What was going on? How did it make you feel? And did it leave you with an impression that lasted longer than the images did? You know, go into great detail about this because you might find that if you don't write it down, soon the images just disappear from your memory like that. The images disappear and so does all trace of them. So it's always good to write them down. And eventually, as you continue working on uh, more mind movies, you might start to see a pattern. You might start to see similar images. You might see the same image from before that is continuing onward. So you get to see more of that. Continue on. Say, okay, I'm back. What's going on? That's why I call them mind movies. It almost reminds me of a strip of film that is constantly going to make the images move and it's it's going at the speed of light so it seems and it's just going by your mind <clears throat> so by focusing your third eye on the image it's like taking the film and like stopping it only you're using your mind's power to enter into that slice of film to see what's happening now, um, there are times, I will admit, when it hasn't exactly been a pleasant experience for me. There was one time when I saw a fire. And I had no idea where this fire was. And I tried to get a fix on where it was. And I knew exactly where it was. It was in the same state. And it was a city that was only an hour away from me. But I looked on the news, and I looked on the news for about a week after that, and I saw no evidence of a fire. Well, eventually, I was able to continue on in that memory. And... Eventually, I found out that it was something that had happened in the past, somewhere in that city. And um, in that image, there was a woman. She was dressed in, I want to say, 1800s kind of garb. And uh, she had like a frilly dress on. And her hair was almost like... It was kind of up a little higher 
maybe in a bun. She was a little bit of an older woman, and I someone had set the fire to her house, and she was struggling to get out while she found herself trapped. And she was trapped in the same room as the man who started the fire. Well, he had taken a shovel and he had hit her over the head multiple times to kill her and the fire was to destroy all the evidence. I didn't get to see the man's face. I knew that he was wearing some sort of overalls. They were real dirty like. He, I don't know, maybe he was a miner perhaps. He was very dusty, I remember. But I was not able to see his face. The face, when I tried to look at it, was blurred out. There was nothing there. But the graphics of that image were very real. They were very horrifying. It took a while to forget them. But um, I, I didn't even write it down. I was so shocked, I didn't even write it down. And I still remember it today. And so that wasn't pleasant. And you are going to see things that aren't pleasant. But, of course, not everything in this world is pleasant. So um, you must make sure that you are emotionally prepared to see images like that. If you do not like the particular image, you can try to stop it. Try to say, I no longer want to go further. Stop this image. Go away. And usually your mind's eye will listen and it will go away. It might come back, though, the next time you try, so maybe you're meant to see this. Now, we were, I was talking about focusing on images that were playing in your head. Now, what about summoning images that you desire? Well, it all entails going back into that meditative position again, and you are going to start to see the images form in your head. Now, instead of stopping them, you are going to say... All right, I clear my third eye and mind of all images. Only bring to me the images that I desire. So, you are probably going to try to do something. You're going to try to find something out in a psychic sense that you couldn't have known unless you were in the particular vicinity. For example, my sister. She is in her room right now. I know she's sleeping, so I'm not going to try it now. But say it was in the daytime, I would try to zone in and I would try to say, all right, third eye, show me what my sister's doing at this exact moment. It might show you something. It might show you an image that's going on that is actually happening. Sometimes you will see images of something completely different. So with more practice, you can control this. But basically what I am teaching you to do is not only find out more about yourself using the mind's eye and the power of psychic abilities, but I am also trying to teach you how to zone in on information that hasn't presented itself to you in the physical form, therefore you must take to it in a psychic or spiritual form. Almost like remote viewing. It's basically a way of finding out information to where you don't have to be in the immediate vicinity to find it out. Imagine the possibilities that a person could go through if they practice good enough. Um, now, what has it done for me? I've already told you about that one not-so-great experience, but there are many a times when I was able to read the minds of my friends. I'm a natural-born empath, so I can feel their emotions, but to actually read their minds, it was amazing. And they, they tried to trick me, and they were like, what number am I thinking of? What color? How does my room look? And... I was able to guess most of them right. So that one, that gave me a great ability. Now, there was a time when I did try to warn someone, when you see the future, 
no one can accurately all the time foretell the future. So if you go to a, a fortune teller and she gets an image of you doing something and you're like, oh no, that's not me. I'd never do that. This gypsy, this uh, fortune teller, fake, fake, all fake. Don't judge right away. See, the future is a fleeting thing and it is affected by our behavior. And depending on what we do, it changes the future. So what this fortune teller might have saw is a particular future in which you made a completely different decision. And it didn't happen because you made a behavioral choice that changed everything up. So, no, not everyone can accurately foretell the future all the time. It is practically impossible to be able to see the future, but you do see glimpses of it. And if you see something that doesn't come true, it doesn't mean that your psychic abilities are faulty. It just means that you're seeing another future entirely. There was a time when I tried to warn a friend of mine about something that I saw in his future that could have potentially killed him. And you got to be careful. You do not want... There are different cases in which you must act carefully. Precautions. You must take precautions. So say there's a friend of yours that's going to be hit by a car in the future site that you saw. What if you told him he panicked... He's constantly looking across the street as he's walking, but then he's not paying attention to getting across the road, and therefore it causes him to hit. Therefore, you contributed to making the future sight come true. So you must be very careful when trying to warn people about omens of doom of the future. Sometimes you have no choice but to say, I, I have no say over this. It's up to him to make the decision. He can possibly change it. I hope he does. He or she does. I just really want to, you know, be there. But you must not blame yourself if your future prediction comes true that you tried to prevent. That's just how the fates have willed it. Now, in my particular situation, it was a bit different. Um, so basically, uh, there was a friend of mine, he lived in a different state at the time. He wanted me to try and foretell his future. Now, sometimes when you try to guess, well, not guess, but when you try to read someone's future, it comes at you in different symbols. It doesn't always tell you straightforward. So, I had a vision that... My friend was driving a car down a long, dark road, and I could see in the horizon the sun setting, and it was purple. It was just pure purple. It almost looked so beautiful and surreal. Now, on one side of the road, there was dry land. The other, it had roots coming out of the ground almost like hands I guess that would assume like that would have said you know the balance of life and death he was on the crossroads at the end of the road there was a long really really large dead tree and it just felt like an ominous warning then I saw an owl sitting on one of the branches and it was glaring at him so almost menacingly now owls for many many years have been seen as the omens of doom so i had no choice to take that into account that possibly something of the negative nature was going to happen i then saw a clock and it was like a stopwatch clock swinging back and forth ticking 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 
And I remember seeing on the clock, it was exactly three o'clock. And then I saw a light bulb swinging and breaking on something. And I heard the screeching of tires and metal flying everywhere. And I'm like, oh my goodness, I believe that sometime in your future, you're going to have a car accident. So whenever you take your car out, just try to be extra cautious, all right? And he's like, yeah, sure, I'll do that. And I'm like, make sure, like, especially if it's three o'clock, make sure you watch your surroundings. And he's like, yeah, sure, pal. He kind of brushed it off, and I'm like, I don't blame him. You know, this does seem a little far-fetched to people who haven't really studied this. You know, you can't blame people for their disbeliefs. It is human nature to not want to be fooled, I understand. But anyway, to the story at hand, I didn't hear from him for about two weeks. And he texted me and he's like, hey, man, I uh, just want to let you know you're right. I'm like, I, I had forgotten about the whole thing at that point. And I'm like, uh, I was right about what? And he said, I was actually in a car accident. Me and a couple friends were going out to a party and some guy sideswiped us. You know, uh, and I'm like, oh my gosh, are you okay? He's like, I just got a little whiplash, but luckily me and the boys are fine. You know, I'm like, oh, good. And he's like, you're never going to believe what I'm about to tell you. And I'm like, what is that? He said, uh, the clock in the car, luckily it wasn't smashed, but it said exactly three o'clock, like you said. And I'm like, oh. And I'm like, are you sure you're okay? And he's like, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Me and my friends are fine. I'm like, well, then uh, I'm going to be a little petty here and be like, I told you so. <laughs> uh, you know, as long as he was all right, you know, might as well throw a little humor in there. You know, now that the crisis seemed to be averted, a little humor. Good thing he was all right. But... So when you, when and if you gain these psychic abilities of being able to see people's futures or see the past, you must be able to accept what you see and try, if it seems menacing, try and decode it as best you can to the best of your knowledge. Try and see if it pertains to you or one of your loved ones, but you can't always be there to protect them as much as you want to. Sometimes the fates will be done. But um, getting back to the full on topic at hand, mind movies, this is a great technique for you to develop your psychic abilities, uh, at least from a beginner's standpoint. It is, a, it is actually how I started and I have been working with it ever since. And I can feel myself getting stronger each and every day as I continue to practice these. So, um, it is just good to get a lot of practice and um, be careful. Now, I am here if you need any help deciphering uh, a vision you had when trying this technique. If you need help, I am here. You can uh, comment on the video and I will try to um, answer that question in a in a video of like a Q&A. So don't worry, I will be with you and I will help you. That being said, blessed be children of nature.